Amen. Let me read to you in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preach to you before. You welcome it then, and you still stand firmly. Verse 2. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you, unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. Verse 3. I pass on to you that was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins just as the scripture said. He was buried, he was raised from the dead, and on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the good news of salvation. Church, let me remind you, it's called the good news because there is a bad news. Bad news is we are all sinners and we are all bound to hell. No one is good, not even one. Romans chapter 5 chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. No one is righteous, not even one. But while we were still sinners, Romans 5, verse 8, Christ died for us. Panginoon, sa umagang ito, salamat na pinupuri ka namin, pinapasalamatan sa kaligtasan, ang regalo na higit namin kailangan Thank you, Lord, for saving us through the gospel, the good news. For this is the only way that we are to be saved, that we believe on your death, burial, and resurrection. At sa umagang ito, Sunday after Sunday, nagsisalibrate kami. Dahil kami niligtas mo. Dahil without you, could never come into your presence. And so, Lord, thank you for this glorious gospel, for this victorious gospel, for this powerful gospel, that in this gospel, we continue to live our purpose in our lives. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for your presence this morning. Thank you that you gathered us here today to celebrate again your goodness and faithfulness in our lives. And Lord, thank you for your for the presence of each one, lalo na ang mga bagong dalo. Aming panalangin, at alam namin na ang panalangin na ito ay kalooban mo, O Diyos. Na sila, kung hindi pa nakakilala sa iyo ng personal, makakilala sa iyo ng personal. Kung sila bago pa lang, tinalang sila dito para sila lumalim sa paglapad sa panapalataya sa iyo. Salamat Panginoon sa umagin ito. Minister to us this morning in a new way again like never before. And meet the needs of each one. Not just as a church as a whole, but for us personally, individually. I pray that when your word is preached, deliverance will come. I pray that when your word is preached, healing will come. Salvation will come. Wisdom will come. Meet us, Lord. Meet to your throne. For you are a gracious God who loves us no matter what. Thank you, God. We bless you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen.
the Lord. Go with me on Romans chapter 1. But before that, I want to thank you for your prayers, for the victorious mission of office, trip in Qatar and in Dubai. Maraming salamat sa inyong panalangin at maraming salamat sa inyong pag-support at nais nice kong ibalita sa inyo na meron na tayong pastor sa Qatar na nagbumi. So, sa uh, ginawa niya at uh, they had grown as a church, ganon din sa Dubai. And so, they are inviting me as again on November or the second anniversary of Qatar and the, uh, I believe, the fifth anniversary of Dubai. Praise the Lord. No? So if you have friends in Qatar, uh, we are informing you we have a church there. You just approach us later or you could look at in our website, nasa Logos Today, nandyan ang website, and then you go to church location and you will find the contact person in our respective churches. Amen? Amen po ba? Romans chapter 1, verse 8 to 17. Romans chapter 1, verse 8 to 17. But before I read the scriptures, lalo na tayo ng mga lalaki, Gusto natin ng power. When we buy a car, we like a bigger horsepower. The bigger, the fastest, the better. And sometimes, makita ko dito sa Taiwan, not sometimes, often, ang mga sasakyan, grabe ang mga horsepower. Sobra-sobra para sa daan. Hindi kumagamit ang horsepower. Too much. Huh? And so, uh, when I was in Qatar, I rented an ATV. And I asked the, the guy, I said, I want the bigger horsepower. And he want, gave me 350. A very small ATV with 350 horsepower. And so, I run it. At ang, ang kasko ay isang pastor. <laughs> And I enjoy playing in the desert with that uh, equipment or with that ATV. And so we enjoy the biggest, the fastest. We like that. At kung medyo nerd ka, when it comes to computer, you want the higher gig, the higher memory, the fastest, the quicker, the better. We love power. And so it is in the time of the Roman Empire. The Greeks have philosophy, wisdom, but the Roman people are very powerful. But with all their power, they cannot change the human heart. No power outside, around us, could change the human heart. In fact, if you look at today, there is the highest rate of suicide in Rome itself. In the time when Paul wrote the book of Romans, he, it was entitled Romans because he was 
writing to the believers in Rome. And it was not Paul who planted the church in Rome. In fact, he had been, been with them when he wrote this book. He was in the um, church of Corinth about 56 years after the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there was something that happened in Rome that Paul wrote this, the longest epistle that he wrote, 16 chapters. And if you read that, it talks about the theme is in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 to 17. That is where our monthly theme, that only we can have the righteousness of God by faith. And he wrote that in chapter uh, 1 to chapter 12, 11. And then he talks about in chapter 12 to 16, how now that we have been saved to behave and to live as believers. And so, in this portion of the scripture, nabasahin natin, it's very important that now when we observe, again, I said, there is a highest rate of suicide. There is even a book in, in Japan, I think, the writer wrote 600 ways to kill yourself. And in Google, the most search word is porn, lonely, and suicide. Those are the common words being searched. And so, also, by the survey, there is the highest or the increase or the use of antidepressant. Because a lot of people are depressed. When you have money, you buy and go shopping as a therapy. Others, they are in the dorm, they're depressed, they eat and eat and eat. <laughs> Two extra rice every meal because they are depressed. Others, they go around places to have therapy because they are depressed. And so, there is a study by one person na siya ay suicidal. So, he go around interview people why they are depressed. And he found out that people have natural physical needs. And that is when it's not met, people are depressed. It's food, water, shelter, and clean air. And it's also equally looking for a strong psychological, quote-unquote, spiritual needs. And he found out that those needs are, listen, that a person should feel you need to feel you belong. Kaya marami sa mundo social club. A sense of belongingness. When people don't have a sense of belongingness, they're depressed. And then, you need to feel that life has a meaning. That your life is meaningful and purpose. Also, you need to feel that people see you and value you. And lastly, you need to feel that you have a future that makes sense. And all those needs, let me ask you, are those needs, and those needs can only be met by the Lord Jesus Christ? Only Christ could meet those needs. And that's why kailangan natin i-preach ang gospel. Kailangan natin ipahayag sa mundo ang kaligtasan. Wala nang iba. Maari sa barangay kaligtasan ka nakatira, pero hindi kaligtas. O sa kambarangay sa street kalayaan, Chuyo Road, you, you, you know, don't you know what's the meaning of our address here, of our road? Chuyo, it's freedom road. 
and every time so we are to bring the gospel out into the world so how many of you let me ask you how many of you are not ashamed of the gospel raise your hand second question so if you are not ashamed how many of you ever personally share the gospel when was the last time? And then break it down again. How many of you have personally led someone to the Lord Jesus Christ? Tanda natin when we engage people into the gospel, we will face opposition. We will be laughed at, mocked. Paul had been through it. He was stoned to death. Pinagtawanan siya. He was put in prison. All the hardships. Every time Paul preached, there is a thorn in the flesh. I believe my interpretation is not a sickness. It's the angel of the devil that bugs Paul that every time where he goes, trouble come when he preach the gospel. Not because nangutang siya bilang kristyano. O nag-networking siya bilang pastor that he was in trouble. <laughs> he preached the real gospel and so he was in trouble. Remember in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, the goal of the devil is to blind and to bind people for life. Ulitin ko ulit. Ang goal ng demonyo is to bind, to blind and bind people for life. And that is why he said in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. Wow, what a beautiful verse. Ang gospel nagdi-display kung sino ang gospel is the gospel of Christ. Who is Christ? Christ is God, the image of God who came to become a man, died on the cross, suffered, crucified, died on the cross, buried, and on the third day rose again from the dead. Why? For the forgiveness of our sin. My sin and your sin. And so, they won't understand the message of the glory of Christ through the gospel. Because the God of this world has blinded the what? The mind. You see, we have to preach the gospel so that the mind would understand. And then when the mind understands, it follows the emotion that we realize, oh, I'm a sinner, I need to be forgiven. And by that emotion, you experience the love of Christ in you and the grace of God. And then the next step is volition. You know what's volition? To act in obedience to Christ. And that's why real people who are saved What's the evidence? Ano evidence mo na bisaya man ako dahi? Or sabi ng ilonggo? Bakit alam mo na ilonggo ako? Siguro sa lakad ko, no? <laughs> For people to know that we are Christians, ba't alam niya na ilonggo ko? Siguro sa lakad ko. Sa pananalita ko. So how would people know that you are a Christian? By your obedience. And so, the world needs to hear. Remember that in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26, Paul said, they have, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. And so, we are trapped 
when we people who haven't heard the gospel people who have been saved are blind and blinded and that's why they follow religiosity to both extreme they are so religious like the pharisees and pagans are extremely worshiping idols making gods by their hands and that's why we were seen in kanina umaawi tayo you are not a god hindi ko na ito ba hanggang doon lang I stick to my calling umuulan na eh so the world needs to hear the gospel and the, the church need to live the gospel why because it changed people lives it is through the gospel that that people are changed si peter tinatawag na simon the zealot alam niyo yung zealot hindi salot ha simon the zealot in that time if you don't understand the word when you are called a zealot you are a person who want to overthrow the roman empire And then he put him with Matthew, the Levi, the tax collector, na ano, na tuta ng ano, ng Rome. So isa opposing Rome, isa kampi sa Rome, they put them together in a team. Only God can do that. Amen? Only God could put people in the church ang iba, Kapampangan, Cebuano, Longo. Here. And work together. Because only God could do that. No one could. Sa mundo, makita mo sa dorm, ando na mga, ano, mga, Dijital, Ilocano, ano yung grupo ng mga Ilocano, tawag? Ilocanja. Ha? 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 Mga Cebuano. Mga kapampangan, doon sila. Hindi sila mag-isa. See? And he bring two people, two brothers, James and John. They are called sons of thunders. You know what's the meaning of thunder? They are the bad guys. Sila yung may mga, mga tao na sa panahon natin may mga tato. Mga maskulado mga basagulero and then he turned him to be called John the Beloved only God can change a person through the gospel and then we have, he, he took Paul the murderer who persecuted the church wrote this letter in Rome who wanted to go to preach And that's why in that time there was started a revolution, a movement for the first century believers. At kung ikumpara tayo ngayon sa first century believers, napakalayo natin. And that is what I want to read to you right now starting in verse 8. Sabi ni Apostle Paul, I'll use the New Living Translation. He said in verse 8, Let me say first that I thank my God, but previous verses, malaman natin na hindi ang sinusulatan ni Apostle Pablo, hindi niya mga kilala. These people should probably have been born again. They knew the Lord Jesus Christ in the day of Pentecost. Because in the day of Pentecost, pilgrims go on that. So these are believers who witness, who Paul didn't meet, but there is something that happened to them that Paul wanted to go in Rome. So when he wrote this, hindi pa siya nakarating sa Rome. All even though he had three missionary journey. And actually he was martyred in Rome in the time of Emperor Nero. Let me say first that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you. 
because your faith in Him is being talked about all over the world. Wow. Ano pinag-uusapan niya siya doon? Yung utang niya ganito, yung away doon. Ha? Ano pinag-uusapan niya sa room? Nila mga Christian. They are being talked about all over the world. The Christians in Rome, Rome in this time, have a population of over 1 million. It's the big city. It's the center of the world. Kung sa mga 1980s, it's New York. Tapos, nung mga 2000 plus, it's Dubai. Now, it's Taiwan. Let's go to Taiwan. Let's go to Taiwan. Walang visa, let's go to Taiwan. <laughs> That's what it is. In the time, people, everybody in the world want to go to Rome. Because all roads lead to Rome. Lahat ay may daan papunta sa Rome. Because every time they occupy a country, they colonize them, they put them and name them as their province, but they take all the resources and let have people govern. And that's why ang sa Israel, sa promised land, sa Jerusalem, sino ang kanilang governor? Si Ponzo Pilato. Because at the time when Jesus was born, when he was had his ministry, it was the Roman rule. And so, God knows how often I pray for you. Day and night, I bring you to your needs in prayer to God, whom I serve with all my heart by spreading the good news about His Son. One of the things I always pray for is the opportunity, God willing, to come at last to see you. For I long to visit you so I can bring you some spiritual gift that will help you grow strong in the Lord. When we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. Verse 13, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that I planned many times to visit you, but I was prevented until now. I want to work among you and see spiritual fruit just as I have seen among other Gentiles. So it's evident na ang believers sa Rome, they are not Jewish, they are Gentiles. When we say Gentiles, halo-halong mamamayan. No? My, my Greek, my Roman, my Filipino. At the time, I believe my Filipino na doon. Nagbibenta ng balot. No? <laughs> For I have a great sense of obligation to people in both the civilized world, listen, and the rest of the world, to the educated and uneducated alike. Because the Roman adores the Greek philosophy. They, have power, they are powerful, they have power, they have army, but they follow Greek philosophy. And so this is the elite. There are the people who are the elite in Rome, in Rome and there are the common people. So any progressive place, even you go where I came from, sa Dubai, you would see rich people, the elite, the educated, and then you will see the common people. And so, so I am eager to come to you in Rome too. To preach the good news. Kaya pag sinabi sa akin mag-comment, buti ka pa pastor, patur-tur. Ako <laughs> nagtutur. I go places to preach. Kasi marami sa buhay nakadetour. Ano yung dito? Ibang direksyon. Nawawala. Lost. And so he said, For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. 
It is the power of God at work saving everyone. What's the condition? Who believes? The Jew first and also the Gentiles. This good news tells us how God makes us right in His sight. I like the New Living Translation. Very simple. God makes us right in His sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Amen? Amen.